Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. Today we have a very special guest. Uh, we, out of all the candidate that I know, actually I know her the best because we used to work together. We used to work uh, very often together. Yes. And her name is Michelle Martinez. Yes, Michelle de Rosario Martinez. That's a long <laughs> one. <laughs> well, yeah. can you help us uh, to? Introduce yourself a little bit to your voter and our audience. Sure, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you, Ethan, for having me on your broadcast here. It's, it's an honor to be with you guys. I am uh, very familiar with Ethan and his crew. We've worked together for a long time. Um, it seems like lo a very long time, but I, I think uh, we met in 2020? 2020. 2020. And uh, so... Myself, I feel like I've been called to do what I'm doing now, which is running for California State Assembly in District 41, which encompasses both the LA County and the San Bernardino County. And it, it's a completely gerrymandered district mm -hmm. because it starts in La Cañada, you know, a northwest of Pasadena and goes all the way across the foothills, uh, picks up cities like Laverne, San Dimas, Upland, Claremont. And then it goes up the 15 and picks up cities like Lido Creek, Binan, and Pinon Hills. So I can drive for two hours and still be in my district. Oh, but, wow. um, you know, I'm just so thankful because I have the commitment of getting out there, meeting people. I've never had an opportunity to get out to Phelan and Pinon Hills, but now I do. And they're an amazing community of patriots. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm very excited to be running for office. Um, uh, when people ask me about my experience, I've had a very successful career in consulting. I worked with international law firms. I would implement enterprise systems and, um, review operations. So I'm really good at like the big stuff <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm not afraid of that. And when people talk about political experience, um, my experience, um, as a leader, in the community has been as councilwoman of Altadena. I served from 2014 to 2016. Loved doing it. Um, I was still working at that time, so it was really hard to juggle both a job and to serve my community. Um, but now I get to do it. <laughs> now I get to do it full time. Um, I took an early retirement at 49. I was really excited to do that back in 2017. And um, I got into it because I wanted to see things change. Uh, as early as 2012, after the Obama administration had seen how badly things had slipped away, not just financially, our e our economics, but also morally, you know, we had gone from being a uh, America that loved Christmas and all, the, but but the legitimacy of it, right? Like honoring God, honoring Christ, to um, being told we can't say Merry Christmas anymore because it oh, offends yeah. people. You can only say Happy and, Holiday. Happy Holiday, you know. It's, so for me, at that point, I felt if I got involved in politics and we changed laws, we could change our culture back. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've learned through this journey is that nothing's going to change unless we're God-centered first. We need to be God-centered. Absolutely. Um, if we put God first, all the other things fall into place, especially with our families, our businesses, our relationships. If we put God first, then it helps us to develop all the other areas of our life. And so um, for me, that means as a conservative, um, Christian conservative, I'm running as a, a Republican uh, for state assembly because I do believe in the nucleus of the family and, and our Judeo-Christian foundations of the party, uh, what we believe in, uh, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom of enterprise, uh, all those things made this country so great. That's that that that's great. That's a great and long introduction. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. That's okay. what happens when you get a politician <laughs> to talk. Well, like most of the candidate that I interview, I have to like ask, like, oh, what kind of Christian are you? Do you read the Bible and stuff like that? But with Michelle, I can guarantee you that she is a good Christian because I know her so well. What make you want to run this time? Interesting you should say that. I've actually been wanting to run for quite some time, probably since 2020. And uh, I'm married. I've been married for 21 years. Um, Michael is my supportive husband. So we're Michael and Michelle. And we're both warriors in our yes. own right. 
Um, but for me, I, I, like you said, I'm a true Christian and I believe that as his wife, I am submitted to my husband and we would talk about it and he'd be like, no, you know, it's, it's putting our private life out there. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I would submit to him and say, okay, he's not ready. He's not ready. And so I, I always bring it up because that's in my heart. (laughs) And, and I was thinking 2026, but 2024 is such a pivotal moment for this seat because Chris Holden, who is the gentleman that had this position um and will be um this is his last term Mm -hmm. it has term limit yes it has term limit so he's exhausted his 12 years and in that 12 12 years yes okay 12 years and uh, why why have term limits when it can go on for 12 years well and he's done a lot of damage in that time you know and people will debate that but for myself i've seen how we've had more planned parenthoods come in uh you know the city of pasadena became a sanctuary city for abortion um so it it's top down you know when you have a leader who's okay with all these things then all the other uh areas beneath him also feel that way so for instance pasadena is a city under chris holden's and chris holden actually um has an office in Pasadena, resides in Pasadena. And so I think he's heavily impacted our community, but not for the good. Yeah. You know, when I think of the city and and how it used to be, I'm a born and raised Pasadenian. I now live in Altadena, but I lived there my whole life. And it was the kind of place that even though it was a big city, it felt like a small town. And we could take our bikes and ride down Colorado Boulevard and go to the, you know, uh, liquor store on the corner and buy some soda and some candy and go back. I would never let my kids do that now in Pasadena by themselves. And we can't do that in a lot of cities. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's because we've lost that sense of the family nucleus and the sense of community. And frankly, there's so much lawlessness, right? When we look at the number of homelessness, um, addiction problems, all of that. So for me, when I look at this stuff or hear about it in the news, it's just not a story. You know, like a lot of people who live in middle America, um, mm. you know, they they live in nice towns where, but for me, I live in Pasadena and or Altadena and we see it all around us. I used to drive up Lake Avenue and it used to be such a beautiful street, you know, full of businesses and just it, it used to be like one of those streets you want to just, you know, have a parade on. It's such a beautiful street. And now when you drive up that street, businesses are closed, biz- buildings are empty, homelessness on the streets, crime. The, the upkeep, it, it's not pretty anymore. You can tell the buildings haven't been painted in years. And I don't recognize yeah. where I grew up. Yeah. I don't recognize it. So somebody has to stand up. Somebody has to stand up and say, this is enough. Uh, they keep throwing more money and throwing more money at it. Uh, but we, we've we spent $103.3 billion in education and we're almost last in the country, right? We've spent what is it uh 23 billion i think or 24 billion in homelessness right Mm -hmm. and we have a third of all the homelessness in the in the world of america and the policies that we have is just insane you know like well as a matter of fact if you drive through the pasadena freeway it's one of like the oldest freeways in, in america actually and along uh the the one 110 in um i forget what the name of that city is it's uh past south pasadena further down they made like all those miniature homes for the homeless they're Mm -hmm. literally like a little box um but what they did is at first you could see them now they've built the walls even taller next to the freeway so you can't see any of it yeah and um, and as you're driving, you can see little glimpses, right? And you see that there's graffiti everywhere and that they're burning wood and that, you know, it's like a fire is about to happen. You know, there's no uh, sense of gratitude for what's been given. Um, so it's it's just lawlessness. And now what they're doing is, you know, creating these encampments. Yeah. And that is not dignity. Yeah. When we talk about how do we help the people, we want them to have dignified lives. That means we don't say, oh, okay, here you go. Here, here, let me help you. Let me give you a clean 
needle mm-hmm. to shoot up with or yeah. you know or you know let me let me call you my neighbor on the on the street it's like no you're not my neighbor on the street you're a person that's hurting that needs that's help actually the first time i heard that <laughs> yeah. my, na- my neighbor on the street yeah, that's gavin newsom wow. yeah that's his yeah our neighbors on the street yeah, he used wow. to say that i don't know if he's still saying it but he's say it google it um, <laughs> but you know the funny thing is that they're not our neighbors they're they're hurting broken people and what to destroy I, their life even more. Well, what we need to know as as a parent, as a Christian, I'm going to love you when you don't know how to love yourself. Yes. So that means even though you don't want it, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to get you washed up. I'm going to get you clean. I'm going to help you uh, overcome that addiction. I'm going to help you, you know, monitor whatever psychological situation you might have either that was brought up through drugs or or you're suffering from, how can we help this person come back to a dignified life? Mm-hmm. Because it's not dignity when we're just stepping over them on the streets. Yeah, I think uh, you, brought up, you brought up Pasadena. Pasadena is actually a very important city to me. Yeah. All my ex-girlfriend during college time <laughs> <laughs> Went there with me. <laughs> it was like my date center. Oh, you're... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, Piachi is the, my favorite restaurant. But <laughs> but when I look at it now, yeah. it's really, really bad. Yeah. I, I, I used to work at the Armani Exchange. Now it's closed. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the, in the back uh, oh, alley. Yeah, and yeah. right now it's just a, a place is unrecognizable. Uh, and yeah. uh, you, you see it. Yeah. There's homeless over there. Before mm-hmm. homeless... You know, they play drum and then they, they do kind of things. They, they, they go like, oh, okay, they're actually yeah. entertaining something. Yeah. But now, I like I, I think it was two months ago, I went to Pasadena and it, it was just oh. a few homeless yelling at each other or yelling at us or something. Yeah. And uh, it become a, a city that is unrecognizable. And I am yeah. scared to take my wife and my family out there. Now I don't have... Uh, mm-hmm. any more girlfriend so it's yeah. just my wife and <laughs> just, my family well, thank goodness for that <laughs> yeah what do you think went wrong policy wise why do they why do you think they they give so much money and uh it doesn't work and their solution is to throw more money at yeah. it what do you think it's missing well i'm reminded of what my grandmother used to tell me you know she used to tell me that you know god was our rock yes. and um <clears throat> for instance if you're at the beach and you're standing at the shore watching the waves go in and out, in and out, right? You need something to anchor yourself to. And that's what God was in my life. And that's what she taught me, that God would be my anchor in my life. Because as you go out into the world, Mm -hmm. you need something that's keeping you where you should be, right? On the right path. And um, what happens is if you don't have that, if you just walk out, and you're enjoying that beach, the next thing you know, it could, you're just having a great time. But when you look back, you're so far from where you started, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 that's the danger of not knowing what our center is. And for us, that uh, as, as a country, it has always been our Judeo-Christian foundation. Mm-hmm. And people are afraid to speak to that because for so long we've had separation of church and state and you know we pulled the bible out of the schools and prayer out of the schools but honestly uh well you know eric ching eric ching is one of our good friends and he always says everybody could use a good christian neighbor and the reason for that is because we are grounded right we know we can't get too far from god's word Mm -hmm. because this is the path that will keep us free But true freedom, not enslaved to drugs, uh, not enslaved to immorality, you know, sleeping around, getting, you know, just getting caught up in drugs or alcohol or, you know, losing our jobs because we can't, you know, get our life straight or not knowing what it is to experience true love because we're confused. We don't know if we like men, we like women. I mean, there's so many things that have taken us off track. Yes. So when we talk about policy... I think that we need to go even deeper because I think that's what the Democratic Party has done for a long time. They look at policy and say, we've got the better answer. We're going to give you more money. Um, Education's a problem. Oh, it's too it's too expensive. Let me pay for your university. Right. Yeah. But what happens 
in the interim, right? You can pay for university. You can pay for the school. We have public school education, but where is our public school education right now? It's the worst in the country. We're 43rd out of 50. <laughs> we used to be at the very top. Caltech got... used to mean something. Yeah. But now it's like, it's just another university. Yeah, it's in... just another cooking in, pot uh, for In Pasadena. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it, it really does. Uh, we had, for instance, we have a mayor in Pasadena who's been there now for uh, two terms. Mm -hmm. And when he first ran for office, he was telling, uh, he was going around to the conservative group saying, oh, I'm going to reach across the aisle. I'm going to help. But what happened, this is the same person that made Pasadena a sanctuary city for abortion. Mm -hmm. This is the same person that was okay with letting the school birds, uh, boards bring in everything having to do with sexualization to our children's from pre-K all the way up to, you know, uh, 12th grade. And so they can say they have good intentions with their policies, but the truth of the matter is that we have to go to the core. Yes. What is it that's affecting all of this? And we know as believers that there is more to this than what you know we see in materialism in this world. Yes, of course, we all want to have a good life, and, and I believe that God will give us that if we surrender ourselves to him. Um but we're trying to m come up with a plan and use policy to do that. And instead of elevating our culture to these expectations, right, which America was always known for excellence, right? Uh -huh. If we made a product, it lasted forever. Like if you go back and look for an oven, it can be 100 years old. I was just this weekend in Santa Barbara at a home where she had an oven that was 100 years old. Oh, wow. It worked on a wood and it had propane, but it was over 100 years old and it still worked perfectly. She was still using it every day. Okay. And so this is like the excellence of America. You would buy a washing machine and it worked forever, right? You would keep it Made for, to last. Yeah, from the, you know, you'd get married, you bought a washer, you had that same washer till the day you died with your spouse, you know. And I now, already changed three already. Yeah. Washer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem, right? This disposable mentality. And so it it's really affected everything. It sounds funny. It is kind of funny, but it it that is our problem. We've become a disposable society. Mm -hmm. And now we're doing it with our people, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The preborn are disposable. Yeah. The elderly are disposable, right? What does what could we possibly say about our community? Everything is for okay for that? our happiness right now. Everything yeah. else could be sacrificed. Yeah, yeah. You brought up uh, abortion. That's a hot yeah. topic this year. Why are you so firm with abortion the, uh, on the issue? Yeah, a hundred percent for life, preborn <clears throat> uh, to natural death. And, and the reason for that is because, again, I'm a Christian first. Before I uh, want to serve my community, before anything else, I'm a Christian first. And I believe in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've gone so far from that where it's almost an interchangeable idea, right? Mm -hmm. Being a believer yeah. and, and, oh, yeah, I love God. But what do you really know of God, right? When we talk about uh, the believers and Christians, there are so many who've never opened their Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Don't pray on a daily basis. Don't read their Bible on a daisy daily basis. And I'm not saying that to be judgmental. I'm saying that because I want people to truly understand a relationship comes from doing life together, right? Yes. I, I could say you're my friend, but if I didn't see you for the next 20 years, right, would, would we really be that knowledgeable of one another? Would I really know what you like, what you don't like? I don't know what happened to you in the last 20 years, right? Yeah. It's, so it's the same thing. You, you might have given your life to God 20 years ago, but if you never opened your Bible, if you never spent time in prayer and you're just, you know, asking God for favors, you know, when you're yeah. in a bind, then what do you know of God really, right? Like, and, and so when we move forward, um, when you're making a decision, well, I'll give you an example. Mm. Do you remember what you ate last Tuesday? No. 
No. But it nourished your body. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? It nourished your body. Yes. It's the same thing. I may not remember what I read every day or what I read last Tuesday, but it's nourishing my soul. Yes. So when I go out to speak, I'm, I'm speaking from that place of, of knowing that I fed myself with God's word every day. And so I, I have the confidence to stand in that, and I'm obedient to that. Um, I think there are certain things, you know, when we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, you know, being uh, displaying love, patience, kindness, all those things are very important. But yeah. we have to do it with strength also. Uh, I just had a, a confrontation this weekend where someone was telling me, oh, that's great, but, you know, you should tone it down. Don't talk about God so much. And I was like... Wait oh, a minute. Yeah. There's, there's no you want to say his name yet. or her name? <laughs> no, no. I love them. They're my brother in Christ. <laughs> yeah. Like what you said. Mm -hmm. That's actually a very a common thing, theme that we've been hearing. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, you're, you're a Christian uh, candidate. And then someone from the Republican Party, like an advisor, will come yeah. up like, hey, hey, tone it down. Yeah. We want you to win. Yeah. yeah. Don't talk about it like this. Don't do that. What are your thoughts on that? Because I actually interviewed uh, a candidate and then uh, she gave me some very, very weak answer. And I'm just yeah. like... I do believe in the victory, but not in the victory that people are talking about. And I do believe in winning, but not. I'm not chasing the win of this position. Mm -hmm. I'm chasing winning souls. Yes. Because I believe God gave me this platform and has positioned me as a leader in my community to share the good news. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we just spent a long time talking about what we're seeing in our community. It's not good. Mm -hmm. You know, homelessness, crime, um, immorality in our in our youth. So when we think about all these things, am I going to put policy to it? Am I going to try to debate um, Sacramento? How far am I going to get? Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I have that they don't have is I have the truth. I have the word right? Yeah. God told us he is the truth, the way, and the life. And so if I share that with whoever God puts in my circle of influence, and I'm just so thankful that he continues to grow it time and time, it just becomes bigger. The more we are willing to stand and speak God's truth, not our own, but God's truth, the more that people will get that seed planted in them. And the more they will understand that our mission isn't just power or, mm -hmm. you know, having a position or a title, we truly want to s impact this world. Yes. And we're going to do it through honesty, truth, and love and compassion. Mm -hmm. But first we have to be honest and say, okay, what is the best way to address this? When we're looking at our homelessness, we're just not going to throw money at it. We're going to say, okay, these people are hurting. We need to take them off the street. We need to clean them up. We need to detox them. We need to understand, is it um, an addiction or is it a mental issue? Or is it just straight rebellion? Are they somebody that needs to be incarcerated? What What is the situation here? Because in most cases, if we take the time to be in relationship with a person one-on-one, -on -one, we can find out what the issue is. And and I don't say this lightly. I, I'm so thankful that God has given me the opportunity to recall everything that has gone on in my life and through my family, you know, when I talk about immigration, it's affected my life. When mm -hmm. I talk about homelessness, it's affected my life and my family. Uh, when we talk about addictions, it's affected my family, right? So I don't say these things without thinking about it, without having felt the pain, the hurt. I say it because I know the pain, I know the hurt, and it's not enough to say, oh, okay, oh, you're you're addicted to drugs. Well, here, let me give you some clean needles. No, we have to take that person, pull them off the street, clean them up, put them in a program that's gonna help them mm -hmm. and and do life with them, right? Get them, get them strong enough where they can stand on their own, not just feed the addiction. And that's what we do with all these programs. What's wrong with making government bigger and making these agencies bigger mm -hmm. is that, once you start them, what is the number one goal for all of them? To grow into a bigger enterprise. Exactly. <laughs> yes, you get, it. you get it. You're ready for office, Ethan. And that's the thing. They continue. They, they don't want to stop. Nobody starts a job with the end goal of losing a job, right? They yeah. want to get bigger. They want to get... And so that's the number one problem when we look at crime, when we look at homelessness, when we look at addiction, all these problems is that... They want to keep 
yes. multiplying the problem so that they will always have a job, not fix it. But from a Christian perspective, we know that's ungodly. Mm-hmm. We know that we have to have accountability. I mean, the reports just came out about the homelessness here in California. Yeah. And what did we find out? That there's no accountability. Mm-hmm. The agency that was created to, for accountability doesn't even have data from the majority of the NGOs and organizations that are supposed to be, they, they have no clue. They can't tell us where the money went. Yeah, and the thing is, in California, we have we, every government have a budget and they have to fight the other agency mm-hmm. to get more money because the money has to come from somewhere or else they're going to raise your taxes, which they are doing already. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what I, I think what they're doing is they, they, they just go, I need money. I need money on this. I need money on that. And they just invent all these services. Mm-hmm. That's how the LGBTQ thing in the beginning was just gay. Mm-hmm. And then it become LG and then mm-hmm. B and then T and then Q and then I and then A and then plus and then this <laughs> and then that. They have to keep growing because they have more mouths to feed. They want to keep going. How are you going to fight that? Mm-hmm. It's a monster in Sacramento. <laughs> well, you know, the Bible tells us that the veil will be lifted, right? And we and and so I truly believe that that we will see his his promise. Um, but that means that we have to be in alignment with him. I mean, California, it, it used to be called the Golden State. And mm. you could you lived it, you felt it, right? Beautiful beaches, um, luxurious towns. Um, like I said, I, I grew up in Pasadena, California. Now I know that's not everyone's story. Um, I was really blessed to be able to have that, but it comes from um, that that American dream, you yes. know, that that idea. And if if I can speak to that for just a moment, the it it's what drives me. Mm-hmm. When I talked about the American dream, my parents came in the '60s legally from Peru. And they taught me when I was born that the world is your oyster. You can do and be anything you want as long as you're willing to put in the work. And um, I went to private school. Luckily, my parents really believed in education. And and I remember, you know, it's back in the day, we used to have these little envelopes and my mom would send us home, I mean, to school with the tuition for our school, right? And I didn't even think about it then, but like sometimes I would shake it and there was coins in there. Hmm. And literally, you know, they were like counting every penny t- so that we could go to school and get a good education. And wow. I didn't know it then, but now as an adult, I realize, wow, you know, they were counting every dime they had to make sure that we we, ha- we got a good education. And that's something that t- in today's world, these kids aren't getting it. You know, they're, they're, they're instead of learning that anything is possible, right? That I'm running on that campaign. <laughs> it's a new day. All things are possible. Um, they're being taught that the man is trying to keep them down, that we're living in a world of uh, prejudice, that uh, there's no chance for their future. And if you look at today's world, you can look at it that way, right? There's mm-hmm. always the glass half empty or the glass half full. Mm-hmm. But having the belief system that I have, I know that I already have the victory. Why do I say that? Because I'm a Christian. Yes. I know that God paid the ultimate price, mm-hmm. the ultimate price, so that I could be in relationship with him. And if I focus on my relationship with God, everything else falls into place. You know, I, I used to wonder, God, why, you know, why do I have this job? You know, it, it, for some people, they used to think, oh, wow, it's so glamorous, you know, to travel and everything. And, but for when you do it, when you're living it, you know, to have to live out of your suitcase, go somewhere in the world for two weeks, a new place, you don't mm. know the language, you don't know the people, and you're there all by yourself, right? That's hard work, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you come back home and you try to connect with your family, and then you have to go out again and do it again in some other strange part of the world. And, uh, and that was my life for a long time. But I was doing it because it paid the bills, right? It, it was good for my family. It was good for me. And I used to ask myself, like, why, God? Like, why, why are you doing this? Like, why, why, do I, why do I have to live this way? Like, out of a, you know, hotel for two weeks. And um, 
But I realized he was strengthening my foundation. You know, there, a lot of times where he's calling us to go, we have to go by ourselves. And even though I'm married, I have an amazing husband. Um, I think what God is calling me to do is is to be able to to tell my truth, tell my story, and share that with the world and, and let them know that it is possible. But we have to be centered. If we're not centered on God, then we're not going to be able to... Um, bring ourselves back to that American dream that we all knew. Thank you so much, Michelle, for coming. <laughs> it is an honor to have you finally on the show. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and now this time you're a candidate. I I'm know. very excited for your campaign. And then uh, your voter turnout is great. All glory to God. He yeah. is amazing. What he has done, I, it's, it's almost impossible, but... God is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But, could could you tell your voter and our viewer yeah. again where you're running and then uh, which city you're representing and then uh, what position you're running yeah, for? Yeah, absolutely. So I am running for California State Assembly in District 41, and that includes uh, the cities of La Cañada, La Crescenta, Altadena, Pasadena, Sierra Madre, and then it skips over to Monrovia picks up Laverne, San Dimas, Upland, Claremont, uh, portions of uh, Rancho, uh, and then goes up the 15th to Lytle Creek, Pinon Hills, and Phelan. Those are some of the major cities. There's a few more sprinkled cities in there like uh, Bradbury and et cetera. But, um, so I'm running in District 41. And uh, for me, it's about love, hope and work. If we have love, then we'll have time to speak to one another and get to know one another. With hope, all things are possible. We wake up knowing that today is a new day and all things can can be done and work because we can't do anything without work. We need to we need to be able to pull up our sleeves and, and get to the hard work. And with, with that, I think that's a perfect formula to bring us back to our glory days in California. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you tell us how we can help, how uh, volunteers can go reach you and how to donate to your campaign? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on all social media. I don't have a website and it's because God has not released me to have a website. I, it's actually built and I haven't sent it yet. And uh, somebody said, well, do you want to win? And I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> and they're like, well, how's it going to happen? I said, I'm just trusting God for all of it. I really am. Uh, so if you you can find me on all my social media, it's the same. It's Michelle De Rosario Martinez for Assembly in District 41. So that's my initials, MDM, the number 4, mm. AD 41. MDM 4, AD 41. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for coming. She oh, is a nice. great candidate, and I know her personally. So before she can be our voice, you need to be her voice. You need Amen. to go out yeah. and walk the walk, talk the talk, talk to your neighbor, tell her them about Michelle Martinez. Send this video. If you don't want to give us view, tell them about her yourself. She's a great candidate, a true Christian, a true believer. Go out and then uh, campaign for her. Amen. Well, thank you very much. And thank you to all of you for your time. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.